my gosh. On this episode of It's Me or the Dog. That's oh, why he tight. drags you. This is every walk. Oh. Oh. Over 20 years of marriage hang in the balance. You laugh at me. They just got you in the eye. After days, months, years of this, the anger builds. You don't want to walk with her? It's embarrassing. <laughs> You've threatened to leave. Oh, yeah. I want to hear what you have to say and what nobody else has to say. Come on. Victoria must take charge. Before we start working on the dogs, let's work on you. And save both the owners. You just stand there until he's quiet. And their dogs. I want him to make his own decision. I don't think this is going to work. But is this couple already headed for a major fall? Oh, it is. It is. My name is Connie Coppola. I live here with my husband, John, and my dogs, Max, Brandy, Midnight, and Sasha. I love them all dearly. Life with four dogs. Very hectic. I just can't deal with the commotion. Oh, wait a Midnight will actually knock people over at the front door. He mouths their arms and tries to drag them into his bed. Midnight starts howling. Is every time. Quiet. Sasha is a horror on walks. She pulls so much that sometimes she's walking sideways. I won't be able to help. When Max sees other dogs, he goes ballistic. He has caused me to have knee surgery, chipped my front teeth, given me a fat lip. We welcome the dogs into the house, but it, it does put a strain uh, on everything. But one day, somebody is going to get hurt. There's no way to control them. I'm sorry. There is a way. Midnight's too crazy. Ripping somebody's arm off, diving on their heads in our pool. The stress level is just way too high. No one in my family will walk the dogs except for me. Wait a minute. Connie, bring them in. Mango, just a minute. Oh, oh, get it. Oh, oh. Oh, God. This is, this is what I mean. I tell my Never wife, learned. you don't know what these dogs are going to do. She just don't want to listen to you. Never learn. You got him? I give up. It frustrates me. The situation has definitely caused a strain between uh, myself and John. I wanted all these dogs now. Don't start with that again. Wait a minute. And when things are really bad, with midnight's really crazy and Max is really stressed, John has threatened to leave. Things are getting progressively worse instead of better. I can't train them myself. I need help. Definitely needs to be a change. I just can't go on like this. I have cried myself to sleep many nights. If Victoria doesn't help us, I don't know where else to turn. <laughs> With Connie and John's relationship hanging by a thread, Victoria Stilwell is their last hope. Hello. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at all these dogs. Hello. So nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Oh, wow. Goodness. When I walk in through the door, this big black dog jumps up on me, takes my arm into his mouth. Oh my gosh. And that hurts. <laughs> It's a dog symphony. They, they do that Sit. all the time. Sit. You're lucky. Normally, he latches on and, and he doesn't let go and wants to drag you like you're his friend. He'll pull you right to his bed. I don't know if he wants to bury you for later, or but that's normally what he does. So he was very good. Do you have people coming in? Very rarely. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Very rarely. And this guy just wants a hide. Max? This is the guy that gets nervous all the time. Lips He's telling me long. now, take me out of here. There's too much commotion for me. I okay. can't deal with this. John and I cannot go away any place for any length of time, overnight, anywhere. So if you leave, he can't cope with it? No. We take separate vacations. We drive down to the shore separately. It's very frustrating. I don't have to even be in the house for half an hour without seeing that things are obviously very serious here. What's the matter, Max? Don't get nervous. These are items I tried for Max right. to keep him under control. He does yank me down to the ground. I used to come home crying after a walk. None of these things have helped you? No. Can I then see you take them for a walk? Oh, sure. Good boy. Good boy. Uh-uh, Max. Hey, sit. 
Did he jump up like that? He just caught you in the time. eye. All the time. Come, okay. Oh, the backpack. Where do you see this backpack? This is comical. People use them hiking. It's not comical, John. We're not hiking. We could. Load it up. OK, guys, let's go. Outside, Victoria sees that the dogs aren't Connie's only source of stress. See, so you're letting too much slack in the leash. That's Hold why he tight. drags you. This is every walk. Oh. John, you I have know, more strength. You want to hear what you have to say oh. and what nobody else has to say. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Oh, so you're okay, walking ahead of me. Okay, I'm not walking on. with that ridiculous thing on okay. his back. Okay. Oh, so you walk. stay here because you don't want to walk with her? It's embarrassing seeing people's reactions with, with this ridiculous-looking saddlebag. All right. John may be too embarrassed to walk with Connie and the dogs, but Victoria is going to give it a go, if she can keep up. The walk wasn't a walk at all. It was like a slow-paced run. It was terrifying. I have to walk leaning back, so yeah. I'm digging my heels yeah. into the ground. How, how long do you walk like this? I used to walk for about an hour, but I can't anymore with my knee problem and back. I can't do it. So you got a knee problem, you got a back problem. Right. And, yet and you're the wrist, these how two yanking dogs. this on my wrist is just and your painful. Wrist now. So do you feel like you're pretty much on your own with uh, this yes, kind of stuff? Yes, absolutely. I think it's very, very frustrating that John walks the two relatively docile dogs, while Connie is walking Max and Sasha. Oh, there's a dog, there's a dog. Hold on, hold on. Take this dog. Oh, shucks. Oh, sweetheart. At one point, Sasha's head collar comes off, and she's free and loose. Oh, yeah. Girl. All right. What happens if Connie was by herself at that point? You always walk a blocker behind. Yes. Only because of the... Of the, this bag. Sag. It'd be nice if you could walk up there with her. OK. Should we join her? Well, let's join her. John is exasperated with Connie, but if they don't learn to work together and work as a team, the dogs will not be successful. It's soon clear just how big that challenge is going to be. Hold them tight, man. OK, John. Easy, easy. Walking with your dog is supposed to be nice. But this, this was horrendous. I mean, that's a huge safety concern. That's dangerous. I mean, no wonder with a bad wrist and a bad back and a bad knee, you just got to hang on for dear life. OK, I see the problem. All right. Glad you do. No more can this behavior continue. Victoria wants to fundamentally change the way Connie walks her dogs. I wanted to come out straight away just to do a little bit of work with Sasha. Dogs right. learn much faster when they get individual attention. What's happening is she's being rewarded by walking. What I'm saying now is no. You're not going to get to where you want to go to until you stop pulling me. And I'll show you what you need to do. OK, Sasha, let's go. Good girl. Good girl. Sasha, let's go. Good girl. If you are more unpredictable to her, she's got to focus on you. The dog's got to realize that you are at the other end of the leash. So you need to get their focus. I'm going all over the place. So if she doesn't pay attention to what my body's doing, then she's going to get pulled around. She's now got to become alert as to what I'm doing. Now, could you do this? So don't ever let her pull you if she suddenly surges out, stop, or if you want to change direction. She now needs to focus on you. OK. I am nervous, a little apprehensive. Let's go. Good girl. This way. Sasha, this way. Use all kinds of noises, too. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Try not to jerk her. OK. Sasha, this way. Let's Good. Go. Nice. Way. With your voice. This I like way. that. Let's go. Making those noises. This way, nice. Sasha. This way. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, Sasha, this way. Good girl. Yes. How's she doing now? She's walking the dog with a loose leash. And that's how it should be. Good girl. Exactly. Big difference. I never thought I'd see this day. <laughs> yes. I'm always saying I have to take two dogs out, yes. and uh, I can't do that anymore. So definitely we'll be walking one at a time. Good. This way. <laughs> Good. This way. Connie walks Sasha. She can have that with all her dogs as long as she puts in the work. This is just the start. Back at home, 
when Connie's son Gabe comes to visit, he's given his usual greeting. Now. Oh my goodness. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you had there. They weren't that bad this time, but when they jumped it up and down. It wasn't that bad this time? Normally, midnight bites my right arm. And, and Gabe has learned to put his hands out and push Mitty's face away. Pushing the face down, you're escalating the situation by doing okay. it. We've okay. got to come up with another solution. <laughs> okay. That is safe <laughs> and is calm. Okay, I'm all for that. I thought your wife was coming too. We leave her in the hallway uh, until they're pretty much calm. So she's even, in the hallway She's right in the now? hallway, yes. She's terrified of the dogs. I'm getting a very clear picture of how things are in this house, and it is crazy. Chris, it's quiet. Point. Hi, Chris. Chris, how are you? Come on. Yep. Do you visit often? Not really. No. And you have four dogs charging at you at the door. It's tough. We just want our family together all the time. Yeah. And the dogs yeah. are our family as well. I mean, they all of us. They just control too many aspects of your life. OK. And right now, if we decided to leave the house, we have to go outside and wait for her to do whatever. I think maybe massage Max. No. Max will always get more food, more hugs he than the rest of He comes to dog. me for hugs, yes. I call my mama's boy because I said she's been babying that dog from day one. I don't. I I've been arguing you. with you about this for, you know, years. All you've done is tell me, but you've not helped me. Did you ever listen to him? Or were you always, okay. No. So, and I understand that sometimes, you know, you don't listen to the closest people near you, but oh my gosh, this dog is controlling you. You create a needy dog. You're the problem. Victoria is in Hoboken, dealing with an overstressed dog owner who doesn't want to face her part of a bad situation. You, you create a needy dog. You are not allowing him to become independent. He is totally dependent upon you because you give in to him all of the time. And when you do that, you're reinforcing this nervousness and making it much bigger than it needs to be. We told you, but you don't listen. I was happy that Victoria, you know, uh, reinforced what I said all along. You've got to build him up. By pandering to him, you're knocking his confidence down. Everything I'm going to be doing is building his confidence up. So he's a confident dog. I've been knocking his confidence down? Yeah, he's not confident outside. That's, That's why, why I found him, so I didn't know how to help him. The last thing they need is to be pandered to. I'm trying so hard to fulfill the dog's needs, and I might be the one letting them down, especially Max. After her son Gabe leaves, Connie explains where she thinks the biggest problems lie. I just he think you guys don't even want to learn anything about the dogs. So None of you guys ever took the time to research what to do with them. You laugh at me. You know, they make fun of everything I want to do with them. So that's why I just uh, don't pay attention. All right. Connie's so anxious to please her dogs. She has done a lot of reading. She's done a lot of research. But this puts a lot of pressure on her, and she can't take it. Connie's overwhelmed. But what I'm seeing a little bit is that in your brain is just on overdrive and you're thinking things on the dogs that maybe are not 100% there. You're really projecting stuff onto, especially Max. And here I thought I was the calm one. <laughs> I haven't seen anything saying calm this whole time I've been here. I don't think Connie's aware that she stresses out so much and that actually a lot of her stress is going onto the dogs. Your brain is going 1,000 yes, to the dozen. Right. You talk about one thing, then you're on to the next, then you're to the next, and, and the stress, and, the, and I see, well, let's, before we start working on the dogs, let's work on you. I feel like you're she's overwhelmed. Got too much, she's got too much going on. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you cry, but oh, I just no, see no, it. I She's just trying to help everybody. On. I try to help. <sighs> I want to do what's right for them, and I feel like I don't have help, and I feel like I'm letting them down because I'm not doing the right stuff. I don't know what to do. Connie started crying when I was talking to her. She feels like she's by herself in all of this. There's a lot of weight upon her shoulders. You're 
right, she's okay. But see, look at these dogs, how much they love you. They come over. Of course they do. To say, Mom, don't cry. I think she just overloads herself with things. I worry about Connie all the time. I hope by me being here, I'm going to be able to take a little bit of stress off you. You need help? Yeah, I know. We'll see if we can remedy the situation, OK? After Victoria sees the enormous stress Connie is under, John pulls Victoria aside to tell his side of the story. It's just tunnel vision with the dog. They consume so much of her time that she has no time for anything else. She has no time for you? It could be a lot better. Right. A lot better. How frustrating is this for you? It's very frustrating. You, you, you don't know the half of it, Victoria. It's like she has no idea what it's doing to me personally, you know, how I feel inside. Right. The anger builds. And after, after days, months, years of this, you know, sometimes you're ready to explode. You've threatened to leave or move out. Oh, yeah. You have? Oh, yeah. We have quite a few verbal confrontations that escalate sometimes because of uh, her hard-headedness mm -hmm. and the issue with the dogs. It's very telling that John actually has thought about leaving. Things are obviously very serious here if he's even entertained the thought. If you can get through to her, you would be doing me a great honor. John invites Victoria on a visit to Connie's daughter's house to show her how the dog's bad behavior extends beyond their home. Connie is a huge part of the reason why her dogs are so anxious. If Connie doesn't change, there's no hope for the dogs. We're the baby puppies. Let's go. Let the chaos begin. Chaos? It is chaos. Hello. Brian and I don't agree with my mother's training methods. Sometimes we think she makes things up. <laughs> Sometimes we think that she just thinks she knows what she's doing. What problems do you have here? Midnight's dangerous. I mean, he doesn't realize his own strength. She's young, she's starting to walk. Another one is coming in two months. I can't take a chance of him knocking her over. If Victoria doesn't help us, the dogs will not be allowed at my daughter's house because of the children getting hurt which would make our lives totally strained. You can't invite anybody over to use the pool. Well, we can't even use the pool when midnight is around. What does he do? He will dive on your head. Really? Yeah. yeah. He just wants to come in a pool and, and enjoy the pool with you. you. He, he wants, wants to be with to you. be right in the middle. Can I see what he does? Sure. So this is normally happening. You have, you're hanging out by the pool, a couple of people in the pool, and midnight comes out. Yep, going it, they can take a nice dip in a refreshing pool. All of a sudden, you have a dog practically jumping on top of your head. And when you're swimming away from him, it's like a shark coming towards you. It was mayhem. It was madness. Then all the other dogs are barking and going crazy. I mean, that's a huge safety concern. John. Victoria is witnessing the chaos caused by Connie's dogs at her daughter's house. Midnight in the pool, he could break your neck. That's how powerful this dog is. It was mayhem. It was madness. Then all the other dogs are barking and going crazy. I mean, that's a huge safety concern. I can see how scratched you are. I and got how... my chest and my arm. Yeah. Midnight is a lab pit mix. The bully breed part of him is very, very impulsive. And he needs to be taught, instead of just reacting, think about what you're going to do before you react. Again, it's about teaching him impulse control, because he sees that as just one big game. I also think that he's not the greatest swimmer. When he's swimming, his body is down. That's why he's almost panicking, which is the reason why he's scrabbling onto you, and that he claws you. Victoria has a plan to help curb Midnight's impulse to jump after people in the pool. Midnight, come. So I'm actually going to give him another thing to do, which is to go find a treat. OK, would you jump in? No, but leave him. Go find. Good. Praising Midnight's good decisions. Go find. Good. Should help wean him off his bad habits. Go find. Good. Leave it. OK, 
Okay, don't do anything yet. Don't do anything yet. And he's waiting. Midnight. Even food isn't doing it. See, this is so reinforcing from him, so I just want you to wait and not do anything until he comes over to me. I want him to make his own decision. Good boy. Very good. With Midnight's attention regained, Victoria moves on with the training. I wanted the family to see that they needed to change the ritual of behavior to ensure Midnight's success. So instead of people jumping in first, Midnight jumps in first to get a toy. One, two, three, go get it! Go get it! That just shows me he doesn't feel confident enough about swimming. Okay, this is good. All right, see how he swims. Yeah. He's waiting for Brian to come in. Yeah. Midnight might initially lack confidence, but it's not long before that begins to change. Now, now that's better swimming. He's going for Good the toy. Good boy, <laughs> yes. Awesome, Midnight. Brilliant. Bring to me. Oh, very good. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to throw the toy first, and as he dives in, I want you to dive in, OK? So throw the toy first. Now, now get in. Just, just jump in. Now, this is fun, good, and he's got the toy and he's more into it than he is into you. If they throw a toy for him and he jumps in, he gets the double reward of grabbing the toy and also having somebody jump in after him. He needs something in the pool that's not you, so you need to give him something else to do in there. With Midnight making better decisions in the pool, Victoria wants to teach Max to make better decisions around Connie. Max is a little too crazy. He will leave my mom's side. So even if Max is here for a couple of minutes, the stress level is just way too high on him as well as us. He leaps up to her, and then she pays attention to him. Well, he, got, he never used to be this dependent. He never yeah. used to be as bad as Well, he because is now. she's reinforced it. Yep. We're going to start this right now. Right. Turn your back when he jumps at you. Okay. Because you're actually <laughs> reinforcing. Turn your back. That's it. Now wait. Max demands attention again and again and again by whimpering, whining, barking, or jumping up at the face. And many times, he's actually hurt Connie. Yet, she reinforces the behavior by giving him attention. You have inadvertently made this dog more stressed. I just assumed he was so needy, I was trying yeah, well, to... Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, this dog is going to really hurt you, Wonder. He's already hurt. He's already knocked two teeth out, for goodness sake. From now on, when he jumps at your face, you are going to turn your back. You're not going to talk to him, touch him, look at him. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You only give him attention when he is quiet and calm. That's it. You just stand there until he's quiet. So five seconds of quiet we're going to do before you give him attention. I am apprehensive about being strong with Max because I feel very bad when I see Max upset. Do the same, John. Connie must stand her ground, no matter how long it takes for Max to learn the new behavior. This is for his own good, believe you me. There's more, going to be more excessive barking as he tries to get your attention. Don't look at that whimpering. Good. Good. Let him go. That is a great decision to make. You're trying to make him more independent, and now he chose to walk away from you. Alleluia. He chose to walk away. It was good to see Max calm down the way he did, because I'm so used to seeing that dog in a stressful, chaotic state. Now, this is nice. Now, you can pet him. That's calm. That's better. Good. Good boy. Coming up. Stand back. Can Max learn to get along with other dogs? That dog even made a move, and he was on it. 
Encouraged by Midnight's quick learning in the swimming pool. He's going for the toy. <laughs> Victoria wants to channel his passion into a new activity at a nearby lake. John and Connie, I want you to meet Brian and Russ. Atlas. This is Atlas. Hi, Atlas. You can see he's already wet because he's doing his favorite activity, his favorite sport. Could we see Atlas in action before Absolutely. we bring Midnight out? Sure. Okay. Atlas. Okay. Come, sit. Stay. You ready? Come on, bud. Whoa! <laughs> the sport of dock diving is great for dogs. Come on. It's great exercise. It channels their energy into a very specific task. Midnight loves jumping on people's heads in the swimming pool. I thought that maybe dock diving would be a good sport for him. Victoria hopes the discipline of dock diving will boost Midnight's confidence in the water. Wow. <laughs> So, I have a toy that he likes here. Fantastic. <laughs> so, Midnight seems a little upset right now. And we try to make him feel comfortable with the area, the surroundings, and I'm glad to see a little tail wag. I thought, Midnight? Forget it. He'll just take off. We're gonna bring him to the end of the dock. We're gonna throw the toy just a couple feet from the edge of the dock, and hopefully the dog will just jump right in. That's half the battle, is getting him to jump off the dock. Okay. Go get him, Mitty. Go get him, Mitty. Come on, Mitty. Come on, Mitty. Mitty, you see your toy? You. See it? You get that go? toy, Mitty. Go get the toy. Go get the toy. Go get the toy. All right, Mitty. This is a lake. You can't see the bottom here. So he was a little fearful. Get that toy. Come oh. on, buddy. Hey, Mitty. I guess I'm off. Get in there, Connie. This is the moment. To encourage Midnight, Victoria wants Connie to get into the water. We're going to hold on to him. Okay. So she can actually get out there. A distance right? where he can't. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. You want to release him? Tell him to go. Go get him. Go get him. <laughs> that is a jumper. I thought it was awesome. I would like to see Midnight in a competition with other dogs. There you go. And he's jumping. Yes. Hand him right to the toy. It. John is very, very happy. I could see it. He's just uh, beaming. Hurry up. Hurry up. Let's go. Go get him. Hurry up. Yes. <laughs> yes. Dog. Dog. That's hey, fantastic. I mean, this is a dog diver in the making. With Midnight gaining confidence in the water, Victoria wants to address Max's aggressive side at a nearby soccer field. What I want to do here is to do a little bit of work with another dog. He is a very sensitive dog. He is neurotic. When he sees another dog, especially, he can't cope. What happens when he does aggress at a dog, the other dog goes away. And in his mind, he made that other dog go in the other direction. <laughs> What's going to happen now is that, in fact, the only way he's going to put distance between himself and another dog is if he quiets down. I don't believe that Max is a really aggressive dog. I think that he's more reactive because he doesn't know how to cope with the situation and because he's nervous. So I'm going to start at a great distance. And I'm going to look for any signal that I like that he can offer me Like this, stand back. As soon as Max saw the other dog, he was ready. He was hyper aware, hyper vigilant, hyper sensitive. That dog even made a move and he was on him. Any look away, any signal he can give me, I'm gonna tell him good. Is that the uh, seek and destroy pose? Yep. It's a down for where he's ready to spring. It's not relaxed, so I'm not praising him for that. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Nice. As I moved closer to Kim and Trina, I knew that Max probably would be set up. <laughs> I want Max to see that the only way that he can put space in between himself and the dog is when he's quiet. Good. Nice. 
Each time they approach the other dog, when Max remains calm, Victoria rewards him. Good boy. He's going to get the reward of being taken away for a calm reaction. Victoria was uh, bringing him closer and closer, a few steps at a time. So when he barks like that, I don't take him away. He has to stop. Max gets more comfortable with the other dog's presence. Very good boy. Until eventually, they are only yards apart. Good boy. He's never gotten that close to another dog. Honey, come here. Oh, my god. Okay. You and Kim are going to just go a little bit there. When he barks, you stop, you say nothing. When he's calmed down, he's walking with you, you tell him, good boy. So take it away. Good. When I took the leash, I was a little afraid that Max would know there was someone else at the other end. Relax that leash. Nice. Good. When he didn't react, I felt very powerful. This is amazing. We're just teaching him how to pass a dog appropriately. And you're telling him, hey, it's OK, because I'm here. You're giving him the Good confidence. Good boy. Yes. Nice. With training going well, Victoria wants to tackle one of the biggest issues of all. This is her norm. Now that Connie's made progress with the dogs, Victoria has one important issue for the couple to face. Oh my goodness. Guess where we're going. When I saw John in a suit with roses in his hand, I thought I missed something. We were supposed to go to a wedding and I forgot about it. <laughs> I'm gonna go out to eat. These are for you. Oh my God. Surprised? Yeah. And look at you! Now, what woman is not going to be impressed by that? You are so handsome. Thank you. You're very lucky. <laughs> I know that. You're kidding? I'm Woo. very lucky, too. Oh. Connie, I want you to put on some smart clothes. And you don't have to worry about the dogs at all. I don't want you to say goodbye. You don't have to go through any kind of ritual. I just want you to go upstairs, put on your stuff, and walk out the door. I could see a little bit of panic in Connie's eyes. She wanted to do a whole load of things before she got ready. You know, it's hard. I've been worried about this Nothing's guy because... Nothing's going to happen to them. They're survivors. That's what she's trying to tell you. Oh, I know. I just am afraid of coming home to pee and this guy being a wreck you know I mean? and that kind He's of He's not going to be a wreck. OK. He is not going to be a wreck, but he will be if, if you make I a stay big wreck, deal. So I'm not going to. So you're going to be I'm strong. Gonna put this down. Go out, put your stuff on, go out for a date with your husband. Thank you. I really hope she gets to a point where she doesn't constantly worry about the dogs. It's going to be so much better for her. Wow. You're gorgeous. How hard are we? Oh! Yeah. What I want you guys to do is just go, all right, okay, off you go. Let's do this. OK. Come on, babe. Thank you. You realize this is the first time we've been alone together out to dinner? Yes. In how many years? Well, you have to learn to do this more often. You know, I'm always willing to go. It's you. You're the one, you know. That... Well, you're going to have to uh, help me out here. I want a Long Island iced tea. Long Island iced tea, <laughs> all right. I need one. <laughs> to an enjoyable evening. To many more. OK. The date was fantastic. No stress. No talking about the dogs. <laughs> it was a fun time. You really look handsome. Because of my suit? Nope. You just are. You just say that. No. We definitely have to come here more often. Mm-hmm. Every two weeks. Alone time. Dinner, show, whatever you want. Oh, I love seeing John sweet again. The way I fell in love with him. I know I must continue my part to keep him uh, and keep us happy. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank Victoria. I know. And while Connie and John are enjoying their date, back at home, 
the dogs are doing fine without them. With John and Connie's marriage back on track, it's time for Victoria to take on one of the dog's biggest issues, behavior at the door. When I came through this door, I got a welcome. And it wasn't the best welcome I've ever had. Oh, oh my gosh. For me who's used to dogs, no big deal. But for people who come to your home, this has got to change. So I want to teach you how to take charge of them at the door. I have a friend of mine outside. If you could ring the bell, that would be great. <laughs> this is what normally happens then, That's when someone begins. rings the bell. Yes. Okay. And then I go to the door. Yes, do not go to the door. Oh, OK. What happens is that there's an expectation. So that doorbell is the trigger. The dogs leap up. You leap up. There's a surge of energy. You're not going to be able to control anything when there's that much energy. So you wait just a couple of seconds till they've calmed down a little bit. Then you get up slowly. Back. Back. Stay. All I'm doing at the door is claiming the space. The dogs need to be controlled until I tell them that they can go and greet. I don't mind whether they're sitting or well, they're standing, they have to stay. Good, good. By giving the dog something else to do at the door, they're focusing on sitting and being still, hopefully for a ward, while the person's coming in, rather than person's coming in and I'm gonna jump all over them. Good, say hello, say hello. Okay, you're gonna take over, Connie. <laughs> OK, you're going to take over, Connie. <laughs> OK. Connie will not open the door until all, all right. the dogs are quiet, seated. Stay. And focused on her. Stay. Come in. Stay. that you've given them food, they're a bit more interested in you, I don't mind. OK. In fact, that's a lot better. Let them focus on you when that poor person comes through the door. OK. Rather than them focusing on that person and okay. jumping all over them. I would love it to get to the point where, a couple of weeks, your daughter-in-law could come through the door without having to wait in the corridor. Just not to see the dogs react would be a blessing, as opposed to jumping, mauling people, carrying on. Well done. All right. Very good, everybody. Thank God. You guys are angels. Yeah. Look at this. I have really loved working with Connie and John. They are salt of the earth. They are a lovely, lovely couple. And they treat their dogs extremely well. I see a bit of a difference in Max already. Working with him is going to be difficult, especially with other dogs. To be able to contain their anxiety, contain their excitement, especially for midnight, it's going to be tough. She gave us the tools, and I know we're going to, uh, we're going to accomplish this. John, I hope that you will be able to relax and that there's no more threats of you getting out of here. No, I'm, I don't plan on making any early exits. I, I, I give things a lot of time. Connie's good in so many other ways that I want to give everything a chance to work. At heart, Connie is a great dog owner. I really hope she gets to a point where she doesn't constantly worry about the dogs. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Bye. Whew. Now it's on us. Well, right? Right. OK. It's been two weeks since I left the Coppola family. And I'm so pleased how far Connie and John have come with their dogs. Look at me. OK. I didn't think I'd ever see this. This is amazing. I'm very happy with the progress. I know we've moved in the right direction. Let's go. Easy, easy, easy. Good. Walking Max was a nightmare for Connie. Look at this. Oh, oh. But the training has really worked out. Good boy. 
When I see Max get close to another dog without worrying about my life, <laughs> I am just so ecstatic. See, he's not interested in her at all. He just wants his food. Let's go, let's go, Smash. John has really stepped up with his responsibility, especially walking the dogs. Huh. Sasha's been progressing pretty well. Good girl. Drastic improvement since the last time. Sit. Wow, look at this. Stay. Just two weeks ago, the dog's behavior at the door <laughs> was appalling. Wow. Stay. It's a big difference. Stay. Now when family and friends come over, Midnight's howling is a thing of the past. Good boy. I do the door training every time. You see the Babe, difference? a little bit of training. Should Remember, it's really midnight? Do it again. That's midnight. Yeah, people oh, won't have to leave, leaving trails of blood in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.